Okay, so I thought, uh, as well as the, uh, the sport in this video, I thought I'd uh, show you a bit of Copart as well. Um, so we are going to go down to, uh, where are we? Dashboard. I'm going to show you uh, some of the vehicles that I'm watching. So if you fancy having a go yourself, it does cost about 50 something pounds a year to be able to bid on Copart. You can, um, you can view without being a member. Uh, but you can't obviously bid. Um, one good way of finding an R bath, if you fancy an R bath, you always have to, if you put in R bath, in fact, let's type it in. Let's put in R bath. Don't think you can see where I'm typing, but if I put in R bath in the search and it comes up, we're unable to find results for our bath. Now I've got at least one R bath, two R baths in my watch list, because what you do, they, you have to truncate them. If you put in the word Arbart, sometimes they come up, no results. If you put in the word Arbar, and you will see eventually, why is my internet so slow? It comes up with three. See, you can see there, they all say Arbar. One at Newbury, one at Westbury, one at Sandy. Now there's one in my watch list which has been miss, misreported, miss, not misreported, mislisted. It's down as a 500 street. It's a 2013. It's a beautiful red one. It's really nice. I like it. Really nice. As you can see, the roof damage there. It's a Cat S, I think. Yeah, it's a Cat S. Roof damage, screen damage. So that roof. Although it's damaged, it's not that bad. I do like the red ones. Uh, although it's a 13 plate, you might have noticed it's got um, facelift lights on it. So someone's obviously decided to try and make it look like a um, a facelift one. It says secondary damage, rear end. I can't see any rear end damage there. If we look in HD, you get a better representation. Oh, that's better. But um, still can't really see any damage there. There's obviously something. It's got the nice leather seats, the same as mine has, which have got glass on them, unfortunately. Um, no front damage. It's only done 26,000 miles, it says there. Up here, it says 29,000 miles. I don't know what that's all about. <clears throat> the good thing about Copart, they never used to do this, but uh, although they cover up the number plate, in the listing, they give you the registration number, LK13 SYO. So you can copy and paste that into um, the DVLA. You can have a look at the uh, MOT history. You can look to see if it's tax. You can see the last time an MO, uh, last time a logbook was issued, and many other things. So that's actually quite useful. So that will probably not. I mean, they've said estimate resale value four thousand two hundred. That's too cheap. You could easily, easily, easily get five grand for that easily. I think it's a Turismo as well, isn't it? Yeah, easily five grand for that probably more because there's not much wrong with it so that damage on that roof looks bad obviously the side windows broken as well but it needs a new windscreen and that roof needs straightening out uh, you know a, a body shop wouldn't have any trouble whatsoever in straightening that out wouldn't cost very much at all so especially if you're doing a car for yourself this would be a cracker it's 2150 pounds at the moment the seller reserve has been met so whatever it goes for it's going to go for it comes up on Monday. Unfortunately, I'm at work on Monday, so I might not be able to. I probably won't be able to watch the auction. But I'm going to. I'm going to see if I can see. If I can't record it, then I'll. I'll see if I can see what it goes for. Um, but yeah, that's a really nice looking car. So that that's one example. Um, as I say, if we go back and search our bar, we've got one at Newbury. Uh, this is a cat in. It's obviously got something going on down here with a wheel. But again, you know, suspension damage. There's no bodywork damage that side, but I can see. It's just going to be suspension, bottom arm, that sort of thing. Oh, <laughs> here's the damage. So it needs a new bumper, possibly needs a new wing or a wing repair. Of course, the only problem with these bicolour ones is you can't. You, the, the chances of getting a wing in that bicolour is quite remote, which is a shame. But obviously, the it's just a silver bumper. But again, you know, silver silver cars are not um, particularly popular. 
so you probably have to get another colour and get it sprayed. Uh, but it looks a business. This is the this is the five nine five C Rivale as well, which is the uh, special edition, which is worth a bomb. So estimated retail value is seventeen thousand. That's at least that much. This is an eighteen plate, and it's only done nine thousand miles, or just under ten thousand miles. But this is a expensive car. Uh, inside, look at that inside. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Let's view it in HD. Look at that. Those beautiful seats. Someone's almost laying down in those seats. That is nice. That is very nice. So it's got the top of the range stereo. It's probably got Apple CarPlay and all that malarkey. That's going to go for a lot of money. It's currently it's a pure sale. So a pure sale means there's no reserve. Whatever it gets bid at, that's what it sells for. I suspect this is going to go for a lot of money. It's only 2,500 and it's in four days' time on Thursday. Thursday, May the 14th. So I'd love to. I'm off on Thursday, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to watch this auction. This is a beautiful car. So if you want a Fiat 500, not bothered about an R bath. Um, if you watched my previous video on the 300 pounder, if you haven't, I suggest you look at my other videos and watch it. You'll see that you can get a mega cheap car. Um, we have. <coughs> sorry, we're not on those at the moment. We're still looking at the R baths. If we look at my the ones I'm looking at. I'm watching a 124 Spider. I have no intention of bidding on any of these cars because I'm not in a position to get another one at the moment, unfortunately. But we've got a pop here, a 2012 pop, which has not got much damage on it. So, you know, it's entry level. It's done 64,000 miles. It's uh, a 62 plate, so 2012. It's in the most popular colour white. It needs a new wing. There may be a little bit of damage to the door. It was going to need a wheel, unless the wheel's in the car. It may be just because it's had a puncture, so it's on the space saver. It may have the odd dent here and there. But if your daughter has just passed her driving test and you're on a budget, at the moment that's is £125 and it's a pure sale. So, you know, it's going to be a cheap car, possibly, for someone. Again, this is on Thursday. If I was in a position, I would be bidding on this. Um, this could be another £300. It's a cracking little car. Not much wrong with it at all, as far as you can see. Now, if we go back to my dashboard, um, we've also got a, 2012, a 2010 Fiat 500 Lounge. There are other cars in there as well, um, but these are the only ones I'm watching at the moment. So, again, you know, it's done 54,000 miles. It's a 2010, it's only a Cat N. So this one's going to be a lounge, so it's fully loaded, it's got the alloys, it's got the aircon, it's got the blue and me, etc, etc, etc. What does it need? It says rear end damage. So we've got a little crease, let's do it in HD. Click the HD button and you get an HD view of it. So we've got a little, little dent in the uh, rear quarter there. And the bumper doesn't look damaged, it looks like it's just popped out. So once that rear quarter's... Um, de-stressed. There's something going on with the light there, so I imagine that, that that's been pushed in a little bit, that wing. What is it a can, I guess? Yeah, it's only an N, so it's not going to be that bad. So once that's been straightened out, that light will go back in and the bumper will just probably pop back in. Not much damage at all there to be worried about. So it's, that's a blinding little car. And again, pure sale, 125 quid at the moment. That also comes up in sandwich on Thursday. So you can see that there are lots of cars there. If we do a, a, a search for, uh, where are we? Let's put in Fiat 500. You will see there are currently 32 lots. There's normally around a 60 to 70 mark, but obviously because of lockdown, less people are driving, less accidents, less cars they're getting. There's some cracking cars coming up. Um, so, I mean, we've got a 2019 Rockstar here, bit of a mess. Bonnet, wing, bumper, airbags gone, windscreen gone. You know, that's quite a lot of damage. It is an S, but it's a lot of car. Back's, oh yeah, look, back's gone. Now, see, I wouldn't touch that one personally. It's probably not that bad. Something going on here with the wheel as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of money got to be spent on that. So, I probably wouldn't touch that one. Maybe a break it if you got it for the right price, but yeah, no, that see that wouldn't be my cup of tea. 
but there's loads on there, loads on there. I'll say loads, 32. I was like, not, there's normally more than that, but we'll, uh, we'll get back to normal once lockdown's finished and people start driving and smashing their cars up. So that's that's just just wanted to show you that anyway. Um, I'll show you the other our bath that I'm watching as well, which is this is a beautiful one. At the moment, it's at five thousand one hundred pounds. It's two thousand and eighteen uh, sixty eight plate, so uh, new shape, obviously new shape. Two years into the new shape, only a cat in. It's only done three thousand miles. Beautiful. There's barely a mark on it. It's got no keys, so the chances that it's probably been stolen uh, without keys. There's, there's virtually no damage on it. It almost looks like a new car. 3,272 miles. There's a tiny bit of damage there on the bottom, a little scratch on the bottom of the bumper. Apart from that, I cannot see any damage. The fact that it's got no number plates on it and it's got no keys tells me that it's going to be a stolen recovered car. Additional information. No keys, mould present in places. So it's obviously been probably left with the windows open. It's been sitting around for a little while. But, you know, they say 12,852. I would say that's probably... About right, maybe thirteen thousand ish. Yeah, at the moment it's at five thousand one hundred. It is a pure sell. It's on Wednesday, three days time. I think that will probably go for around the seven thousand mark, which you know, twelve thirteen thousand pound car going for seven or eight thousand. That's absolute bargain, especially if you're going to keep it for yourself. That's a competizione, or however you pronounce it. Um, it's got the, the four pipes, four exhaust pipes which is quite cool, uh, it's got the seats which look a bit on the uncomfortable side as far as I can see but they're probably not, um, but yeah that is a cracker of a car, again top of the range stereo, um, nice motor, nice motor, so if you want to get a car for yourself and have a little tinker and get yourself a really cheap car then I think this is the place to do it, you know you could go to a dealer's and pay 12, 13, 14,000 for this car and all you've got to do is stick, stick a set of number plates on it and get a set of keys uh, made up which cost you about 300 quid and then the car's yours ready to go it's a no brainer as far as I'm concerned um, basically I couldn't afford to go out and buy a 14 grand 500 as a second, certainly as a second car because I've got my family car which is my 500X and then I've got my at the moment my eye bath um, you know, and I couldn't afford to get another one not paying those sort of prices. So I'm going to drink, carry on drinking my beer. And um, thanks for watching. So uh, yeah, so that's Copart. Have a, have a little look, see what you think. The scrap has been building up for a couple of months or so from numerous cars. And my scrap man's just turning up now to collect it all. That's good. You've seen a battery charge do this is that a pulse charge I've never seen a battery charge do that before so I've just had a delivery of the uh, the rear bar that I bought with that attached to it as the one I had wasn't and although I could have welded it on it's just a lot easier I've got this for 22 pound plus 10 pound delivery and I've still got the other one anyway that I can either keep or sell so I thought I might as well be a lot easier so tomorrow I'm gonna change that back bumper, change the bumper bar, put the new back bumper on the up half. Uh, I've just had the delivery of the lights for, uh, for here, so I'm going to put those on now. I've still got a problem with the parasitic drain, as I may have mentioned earlier. Um, I've got the original battery back on charge again, and so not the original, the new battery, um, which is charging, been char charging all day. Um, the other one is in the car, which is flat. So I don't know what's going on with this. It's uh, driving me around a twist now. Um, so when this is finished charging, I shall uh, get this one back in the car again. Um, I think what I'll do is probably, until I can figure out what's causing it, I shall leave the battery disconnected or leave the earth terminal disconnected and see if that, that should hopefully stop it from draining. At least I can just reconnect it and do what I'm doing. So um, without having to keep charging the battery. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do these lights now actually. I'm gonna take the bumper off and uh, put these lights on. So the thing about these lights, being brand new ones, is that they don't come with bulbs. So I'm going to have to put bulbs in them all. I'll say in them all, in both of them. And I've got some nice blue bulbs for the, uh, the main light. 
so uh, they always look nicer I think. So which side's this? That's the other side. Take one on. Side. So obviously before I put them on, I'm going to put bulbs in. There they are. So I've got some, uh, some oh, shite hawks. Didn't want to drop them. Hopefully I haven't broken that. So these bulbs are um, with the lens. Yeah, nice blue bulbs. They do give you a much brighter um, light much much brighter so I'll put one of those in I usually have to do these things up with a pair of pliers but it's a lot easier when it's um, not in the car they're a nightmare when they're in the car anyway this is a bit boring so I'm going to put this on time lapse doing this are on. I've not um, plugged them in but it uh, looks much better doesn't it now the lights are in. Almost finished now. So uh, yeah that's that job done. Um, now we just need to try and get to the bottom of why uh, where this parasitic drain is coming from. So I still need to wait till this battery is charged before I can do any more on this. Um, but I just thought I'd include this bit today anyway. CECU scan fired up and to the car. I'd forgotten we actually got a flashing mileage, haven't we? Not that that's going to be anything to do with the parasitic drain, but someone had, had asked how you um, reset it, so I'm going to show you. So you choose the correct car at the top, in this case 1.28 valve 500. You come down to body computer, and under that sub menu, you've got can set up proxy alignment procedure. So you click on F10, connect. The engine doesn't have to be running for this, it just needs to, uh, ignition just needs to be on. So it's reading the data. And it's reading the data, there we go. Oh, convergence telematic node, ah. I believe that that is what is causing my parasitic drain. Because I've read elsewhere that the, uh, if the uh, Blue and Me unit blows up, stops working, it causes a drain. And we have a drain. Therefore, I put money on it that that's what it is. So obviously it hasn't been removed, but for whatever reason it's not working. And it has been known on the forums that it causes a parasitic drain. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if that is why the mileage is flashing now uh, sorry that is why the uh, parasitic drain if you if you physically remove it i.e. take the plugs out it will um, it will stop the parasitic drain that's interesting so I'm hoping I might have to get another unit so basically this is the the convergence telematic node 
uh, is behind that panel there, which is the blue and me thing. So presumably, if I press the voice button, let's turn the stereo on, let's turn the volume down. If I turn the volume and then press the voice button, yeah, nothing happens. So the steering controls are not working on the uh, telephone thing. Interesting. Yeah, not working. So whether that means I can replace it or not, I will. I will try and get one. I'll take this one out of this and then get a new one, second-hand one. Um, there are only apparently a couple of different types. Not necessarily going to cure the problem. If it doesn't cure the problem, then we just have to switch it off and uh, obviously sell the car and say sorry, but the steering wheel controls don't work and let them pick the bones out of it. So yeah, I'm pleased. I'm, I'm sort of pleased about that. So. We've still got flashing mileage, obviously. So what we need to do, go to adjustments, proxy alignment. So it shows you everything that's enabled and everything that isn't. So I wonder if we can try enable, re-enabling it. Uh, auxiliary audio input, no, that's not it. Uh, it doesn't actually show on there, I don't think. I don't recall seeing it. Anyway, we won't worry about that for the time being. We're just gonna try and get rid of the flashing mileage. So you click on execute. Press Y to continue, and then that writes to each node. And as you as it goes through them, you'll see each computer it writes to. And hopefully successfully, it will probably get to the telematic node, and it will say failed. It takes a couple of minutes to go through them all. Successful on the dashboard. The airbag should be successful. There's nothing wrong with the airbags. success on the airbag completed so yeah so that isn't there so now we have to turn the key to off obviously in this case switch the engine off turn it back on again and the mileage should stay steady he says there you go stop flashing now so that's done that that's sorted that out so that is how you stop the flashing mileage simple as that so if we uh, connect to the body computer I think I'm really pleased about that I'm really beginning to think I've figured out what's causing the problem error codes it's reading some oh oh yeah of course we've got indicators and stuff Receiver ray uh, mini crypt. I've no idea what some of these things are. Airbag node, battery voltage, open short circuit at ground. So that is probably going to be. Oh, some of these intermittent ones, obviously, they will go when I clear them. Things. Front and side lights, I guess that's because they're not connected. Daylights aren't connected. Well, convergence telematic node is intermittent there. I'll clear the errors, see what comes back. No fault codes. The ones for the lights will come back. They may just pop up, we may have to disconnect and reconnect. But they will obviously come back, so we'll come back to that in a second. So, dashboard. So, blue and me, so this is the blue and me module. It may not even connect to it, it'll say it can't connect, probably. Failed, yeah, no response from module. So that module is knackered. Um, it's probably the module rather than the wiring. Um, so I will get another one and put that in. Uh, and hopefully that will be my parasitic drain. Um, airbags, we know the airbags are okay, but we'll connect it anyway. Takes us in. They all, they all take a second few seconds to connect cut to errors I do this with every car I always plug in and see if there are any error codes because sometimes there are oh, what we've got control unit power supply intermittent that's going to be the battery there's, there's problems with the batteries so that's gone that won't come back and we know that all the airbags and everything are working anyway so I don't think we need to check anything else to be honest because I think if we go back did we go to the dash? Oh yeah, we went to that, so it wouldn't connect to that. Uh, we can connect to the speedo. So 
the instrument panel, i.e. the speedo, we can connect to that to see if there's any errors. Which I don't think there's... There might, there might be intermittent ones like they've been on the others. All related to batteries being disconnected and the ignition being disconnected and so on. Reading error codes. No communication with parking control mod. Oh, we know about that. There's something wrong with that. These are all intermittent. Convergence node. Clear them. No fault codes. So if we now go back to the body computer, so that will probably show us those those errors will probably come back up again. The ones for the lights. Let's go into the errors. Yeah. So we know they're present because they're not plugged in. So we know that. So that's good. So. What else? Dashboard, instrument panel. I think we've done that. Is that what we just did? Forgotten now. We'll do it again anyway. Back to errors. No fault codes, that's good. Okay. So, yeah, that's good. So, we know that the problem, or there is a problem, with that convergence node, i.e., the blue and me unit, we know it doesn't work. Let's turn the stereo back on. Press the voice button again. Nothing happens. So yeah, we, so we know that that's faulty. And I, as I say, I've seen it on numerous reports on forums uh, that the parasitic drains have been traced back to that, and that isn't working. And it's too much of a coincidence for it not to be that. So I'm pretty certain it's that. Whether putting a new module in will do the trick or not remains to be seen. But we will try that. Um, I don't think there's anything else to try now. So I think what I might do is uh, reconnect all the lights up anyway. Because we know they're okay now. Was what we thought was the problem. We'll quit that now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reconnect the lights. So the mileage isn't flashing now. Reconnect the lights. Um, and then I'm just going to disconnect the earth of the battery. Um, just so the battery doesn't go flat again. That's good, I'm pleased. Tomorrow or maybe ne the end of next week I shall take that panel off. So as you've seen in other videos, you have to take the back seats out, um, take that side panel off to access that blue and me unit. It's held in by a cage which is riveted in. It's a pain in the back side to, um, to remove just because you've got to take all the seats out on that. Uh, but it's got to be done. So it doesn't take long. It takes about half an hour or so I suppose. I've, done, I've taken that all off so many times. It's just a nuisance. Um, and then we'll get a new one ordered second hand one ordered. You can pick them up for around the 50, 60 pounds mark. Um, so when we do that, we'll, we'll put it in and then hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get it to work. Um, if not, we'll leave it disconnected and then again, leave the battery connected and see if the battery goes flat. But my money's on that. I'm pretty pretty convinced that's what the problem's going to be. So that's good. So that's uh, the end of the sport video for today. It's only a short one, I know. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of that today. Once again, I'd like to thank each and every subscriber. You're pushing me near the thousand mark. It won't be long now, another couple of weeks, and I think we'll be up to a thousand. So please like, subscribe, and share this video far and wide. And um, we'll see you within the next few days because we're going to do the R bath bumper tomorrow. Uh, now I've got the new bumper bar. And then once we've um, sorted out what we're going to do with this one, well, we know what we're going to do with this one, but uh, it's a matter of doing it. So we'll, we'll film that and, um, and we'll have a We'll have another sport video um, probably next weekend, and uh, the old bath video will be during the week. Uh, so we'll upload this one later on today, or, or maybe tomorrow, and um, we'll go from there. I'm going to also include some co-park stuff on this video as well, as this is only a short one. I thought I'd um, do a bit of recording of uh, some of the cars that are on co-park if you fancy having a go yourself. Anyway, for the time being, thanks for watching again, and uh, we'll see you soon.